Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're going to preach the word tonight, amen? Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach y'all happy tonight. When y'all leave out of here tonight, y'all going to be skipping when y'all leaving out that door tonight. Praise be to God. I ain't letting nothing hold me back. I'm sick and tired of the devil beating me down. I'm sick and tired of the enemy wiping my family out. I'm tired of sitting around worrying full of anxiety all the time. I'm tired of sitting around worrying about what's coming next in my life. I'm going to start leaning on the Word of God. I'm going to start leaning on Jesus Christ. I'm going to start trusting in the blood of Christ. And I'm going to let the Lord touch me tonight. Just like that song she sang. Oh, He touched me. Have you been touched by Jesus tonight? Has Jesus Christ touched you down in your soul tonight? Has Jesus Christ touched you down in your heart tonight? Has Jesus Christ changed your life tonight? You know, we all sit around a lot of time, and we're talking about, you know, it's time for change in our life. But nothing never happens in our life. We talk about it's time for us to change this. It's time for us to change that. I'm sick and tired of this going on. I'm sick and that tired of that going on. Yeah, but nothing happens in our life tonight. If you will turn in your Bibles tonight to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, chapter 5 and verse 17. It'll be up on the board. If you don't want to go to your Bibles, that's fine too. But your life, listen folks, we always talking about we want to change. But listen, your life is never going to change until you change it with the Word of God. As a matter of fact, it can't change without the Word of God. Listen to me. You, we, can't will, we can't will anything out of our lives tonight. Only through the Word of God can we become new creation tonight. It says in the book, first, in the, uh, book of 2 Corinthians, 5 and 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Listen, we say, well, I'm going to quit smoking. We say, well, I'm going to quit drinking. We say, well, I'm going to quit doing drugs. We say, well, I'm going to quit uh, uh, being promiscuous. We say this and we say that. But listen, folks, you are never going to change until you change through the Word of God. You're never going to change until you take on the Lord Jesus Christ. We well, say, when we become a new creation in Jesus Christ, we do this by changing our ideas. We do this by exchanging our beliefs. We do this by exchanging our attitudes for God's beliefs and God's ideas and God's attitudes. You've got to change your old way of thinking into a new way of thinking tonight. This is how change takes place, folks. See, we give up how we think and we agree to think in line with God's Word and how He says we should think. See, we make a decision tonight to agree with His Word and stop agreeing with the things that the world has to offer. Don't you know that the things that the world has to offer, even though it may look like a, 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 a something good, even though it may be an attraction to your flesh, even though it may be an attraction to your mind, don't you know that the things of the world are destroying you every day? Don't you know that the things of the world are tearing your life apart every day? And listen, folks, we got to find out what God's Word says tonight. That we got to stand on the word, our word of God tonight. That we got to believe in the Word of God tonight. And we got to exchange the way we believe. We got to exchange our ideas. We got to exchange our attitude. And we got to pick up the mind of Christ tonight. And we got to pick up His belief. And we got to pick up His ideas. And we got to pick up His attitudes. And the only way you can do that tonight, folks, is get in the Word of God. See, we take so we take so much. Uh, we don't we don't look at this word as being that important. But listen, it's the only way you're ever gonna change tonight, folks. See, you have to forget about all the stuff you've been taught your whole life. You got to forget about how you was raised. You got to forget about all the things that you uh, was taught as a child. And you got to pick up the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, folks. And, and listen to me. And you got to take on the mind of Christ. And you got to let Jesus Christ teach you His ways tonight. If you've been born again, then you have the mind of Christ. Over in the book of Philippians, chapter two and verse five. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not wrong to be equal to God. He said, he said, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a son. Hallelujah. Listen to what I'm preaching tonight. This is good stuff tonight. If you get this down in your spirit tonight. It says, but it says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind was in Christ Jesus? He had the mind of God in him. See, he thought it not, he, he thought it not wrong. Robert to be equal with God. And listen, folks, when we got the mind of Christ, you can look at yourself as being equal with God. Now, I'm not saying you're God tonight, but see, you can have the mind to be equal with God. You can have the same power that Jesus Christ has got. You can have the same uh, anointing that Jesus Christ has got. And you can have the same power that Jesus Christ has got. But you got to take on the mind of Christ. you got to quit that old stinking thinking. you got to quit that old way of thinking. And you got to pick up the Lord Jesus Christ. And you, and you got to let it not be robbing you to think you're equal with God tonight. 
tonight. But see, how did God, how did Jesus get so powerful tonight? How did Jesus become so powerful tonight? See, he had the, he had the mind of God in him. But he said he put himself as a man of no reputation. In other words, he wasn't out to make a name for himself. He wasn't out for nobody to pat him on the back. He wasn't out for nobody to put the lights on him. And he didn't need his name on the side down by the road. He said he was a man of no reputation. And he took on the form of a servant. In other words, Jesus Christ was a servant. Over in the book of Matthew 20 and 28, it says that he did not come to be served, but he came to serve. And that's how you take on the mind of Christ tonight, folks. You get a service mentality tonight. You get a service attitude tonight. And you serve everywhere you go. You be a servant to everybody you come in contact with. You say, the preacher, that man ain't treating me right. Preacher, that woman ain't treating me right. You serve that woman. You serve that man. That's the mind of Christ tonight. And when you start becoming a servant and you take on the attitude of the servant, that's when you're going to get the power of Jesus Christ in your life. And that's when you're going to become mighty in this word. And see, that's when, he, that's when you're going to be able to take your old way of thinking and you're going to start thinking in a new way. You're going to start thinking in the way of Christ thinks. Let this mind be in you that was also in Jesus Christ. So listen, if you're, if you're thinking don't line up with the word and you never allow his word to change your thinking, then you're never going to change, period, folks. Listen to me. Listen to me good right here. This statement right here. The devil has spent years programming your mind to go against the word of God. The devil has spent years programming your mind to go against what God wants you to do in this life. And until you come to the place where you're ready to let Christ rule and reign in your heart, then you're going to be stuck right where you're at. You're never going to go forward. You're going to wake up 10 years from now. You're going to wake up 20 years from now. You're going to wake up 30 years from now. And you're going to be in the exact same place you was because you ain't never moved an inch. As a matter of fact, if you don't let Christ rule and reign in your heart, you're probably going to go backwards. You're probably going to transgress worse and worse. You're not going to get better. But when you will take on the mind of Christ, when you will learn how to be a servant, this is something I ain't even going to serve. Praise God. This is scripture right Peter and John was arguing, asking Christ, who's, uh, who, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Am I going to be the greatest? John. Am I going to be the greatest? Peter. Am I going to be the greatest? And what did Jesus do? Jesus disrobed himself. And he girded himself about with a towel. And he got a basin of water. And he started washing their feet. And he was showing them, whoever serves is going to be greatest in the kingdom of God. And whoever serves on this earth is going to be greatest in this word. Is going to be greatest in, 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 in this world right here. Listen, folks, when you take on the service mentality, Miss Lisa brought the people from the rest home or wherever they were from, uh, the home they was from, that's a service mentality right there. She wanted to come to church, and they said, well, she had to work, so what did she do? She brought them with her. And that blessed me more than you. You just don't even know. And the week before, we had a little girl come up here, head down, sitting, and saying Jesus love. It was just the most beautiful thing. And listen, folks, them the people we're supposed to be ministering to. We ain't supposed to be ministering to people with three-piece suits. We ain't supposed to be. We ain't supposed to minister to everybody. But you ain't supposed to be uh, favoring people who, who's got money and favoring people who's got stuff. No, we're supposed to go out and heal the brokenhearted. We're supposed to go out and help those who can't help themselves. We're supposed to be a servant to those people that have no way of repaying us. That's when you really get blessed. That's when you really take on the mind of God. And that's when you really become powerful in the Word of God. And that's when your life can change for permanent. See, when you start doing that kind of servitude, that's what God's calling us out to do tonight, folks. Somebody say amen to that. See, if we're really... If we're really going to take on the mind of Christ tonight, this is going to require, this is going to require some effort on our part. This is going to require effort for us to get in the Bible. This is going to require effort for us to read the Bible so you will know how to line yourself up with God. I'm going to say that again because there's people in here that need to read that. This is going to require effort on your part. I can't read the Bible for you. I can't pick up the Word of God for you. I can't get on my knees and pray for you. I can't do what God wants you to do for you. You've got to do it for yourself. And when you start doing it for yourself tonight, you're going to see your life changing for the good enough. Somebody say it for you This is what you want. It's up to us. And it's going to require effort on our part. It ain't just going to happen. God ain't no magic genie. And he ain't going to wait no one over us and make all the bad stuff go out of our life. No, it's up to us. If we want it out of our life, we can change it. But how do we change it? We take on the mind of Christ tonight.
You can't change. You can't wheel stuff out of your life tonight, folks. You know how many times before I got saved, I would end up getting in trouble. Or I end up going out and spending all my paycheck on Friday night. I'd wake up Saturday morning, work 50, 60 hours. Wake up Saturday morning, couldn't even go buy a hot dog, 50 cent hot dog. Because I done smoked it all up in crack. Listen to me tonight, folks. Listen to me. That's what the devil wants you tonight. He wants to steal and kill and destroy. He wants to take your life out tonight. He wants to destroy everything that you're trying to do tonight. He's wanting to make you commit suicide tonight. He's wanting to destroy your relationships tonight. Don't you know the devil don't like you tonight? Don't you know the devil's mad at you tonight? That's why we got to take on the mind of Christ tonight, folks. we got to be strong in the Word of God tonight. If you ever going to change, you can. it's going to take the Word of God changing. Listen, until the Bible says, until you put on the whole armor of God, until you put on the Word of God. In other words, let me break this down to people. Until we learn to get up every day and put on the Word of God and put on the armor of God and prepare ourselves for battle. See, then, then, uh, uh, then you would never see, you got to understand that we're not a match for the devil tonight. And you're not stronger than the devil. But w uh, uh, without God's armor, you're never going to win. Y'all stay with me tonight. Go to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Praise God. I ain't going to get to where I want to get to tonight. But praise God. I'm going to preach this thing. I'm going to preach this thing like Jesus is coming back tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Listen to me, all y'all that are in a spiritual battle tonight. All y'all who are struggling tonight. All y'all who's got addictions y'all can't seem to overcome tonight. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, we ain't fighting against who we can see. My fight ain't with Tracy tonight. My fight ain't with Tommy tonight. My fight ain't with Donald tonight. My fight ain't with Alan tonight. I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But the Bible says that we fight against principalities. We fight against powers. We fight against rulers of the darkness of this world and we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. So listen folks, we're in a spiritual battle tonight. This ain't a fleshly battle tonight. We're not fighting against flesh and blood tonight. We're fighting against the unseen tonight. We're fighting against demons uh, uh, in darkness tonight. We're fighting against rulers in the dark world tonight. We're fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places tonight. We're fighting demons tonight. We're fighting, hallelujah. Don't you know these addictions we got in our life? They ain't nothing but demons. Don't you understand? Listen, why do you think they call liquor spirits? Because it's bad spirits. And every time you pour that liquor down in your gut, you pour the devil right down in your gut. Every time you snort a line, you snort that devil right down in your uh, up your nose. And every time you do a shot of dope, you shoot that devil right up in your face. Don't you understand? We're fighting a spiritual war tonight. And if he can keep you uh, uh, under the gun tonight, if he can keep you where you think it's your that your fight is against uh, other, other people tonight. He's going to whoop you every time. You're never going to win tonight. It says in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh-oh, there you go. In the evil day. We all got an evil day, folks. And our evil day is what's killing us tonight. Our evil day is what we can't seem to overcome tonight. Our evil day is what we can't seem to uh, uh, get out of our mind tonight. But what does it say? And having done all. Having done all what? Having put on the whole armor of God. That's what he's talking about. Having done all. We done all. What have we done? We put on the whole armor of God. And then the next part of that verse, it says, then stand. So once we get up every day and we get prayed up and we get read up and we get in uh, we get in fellowship with God every day. See, we're putting on the whole armor of God. We've done all that we're supposed to do. Now it's time for us to stand. It's time for us to believe in the Word of God. It's time for us to stand up for Jesus Christ. It says in the verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. In other words, we're supposed to wrap the truth of the Word of God all around us. We're supposed to bask ourselves in the truth of the Word of God. We're supposed to know the truth of the word of God and that way when the devil tries to come and tell us a lie, when the devil tries to come and tell us something that ain't true, when the devil tries to come and deceive us, he can't deceive us, why? Because see we done got up early in the morning and now we done girded our loins about with truth now we got on truth and then it says and then put on the breastplate of righteousness, see where the devil tricks us tonight See, we think we're righteous by our good deeds. We think we're righteous because we go to church. We think we're righteous because we pay time. We think we're righteous because we do our good and good list. We think we're righteous because we go to the rest home. We think we're righteous because we go to the hospital. We think we're righteous because we ain't mean people. No, the only way you're righteous 
tonight, folks, is through the blood of Jesus Christ. You ain't righteous no other way tonight. You can't work your way to heaven, and you can't work your way righteous tonight. The only way you can be righteous tonight is to accept the free gift of salvation tonight and allow Jesus Christ to pour out his blood on you. So now here we are. We done got up early in the morning, and we done got up with God, and now we done gird our loins about the truth, and now we done put on the breastplate of righteousness. And then the next, the next verse, 15, says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What does that mean, Pastor? I got my truth on. I got my breastplate of righteousness on. And now my job is to go sow peace everywhere I go. I go to work, I'm sowing peace. I'm loving on people, I'm sowing peace. I, I, I go to the store, I'm sowing peace. I go home, I'm sowing peace. I go to my neighbor's house. I'm sowing peace. So see, I'm making a point in my life to sow peace everywhere I go. How can I do that? Because see, now I, done go, I have done girded my loins about with truth. I done put on the breastplate of righteousness. And now I can shed peace everywhere I go. Everywhere my feet step, I'm shedding peace everywhere I go. I'm not being mean to people. I'm not being unkind to people. I'm not being rude to people. I'm not being selfish to people. Now I'm being kind and I'm sowing peace everywhere I go. And when you do that, you're receiving the power of God in your life. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. Verse 16, and it says, above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. What is the shield of faith tonight? The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you start reading this word, and you start putting this word inside of you, your faith is going to start being strengthened. And the next thing you know, you're going to have a shield all around you of faith because you've taken time to get in this word every day, and you've taken time to read this word, and now you've got a shield of faith around your breastplate of righteousness, around your feet that shod with peace, around your loins that's girded with truth, and now you've got a shield of faith in front of it. Why do we need the shield of faith? In that same verse it says, so we can quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Don't you know the devil seeks like a roaring lion and he's seeking who, whom he may destroy? He's going to go to everybody in here. And when he can't get one of us, he's going to go to the next one. When he can't get him, he's going to go to him. When he can't get him, he's going to go to her. He's seeking tonight, folks. He's seeking whom he may destroy tonight. And see, folks, when we got the shield of faith, when he shoots a fiery dart of cocaine at us, we got the shield of faith we can throw up. When he shoots that fiery dart of a can of beer at us, we got that shield of faith we can throw up. When he shoots that a fiery dart, uh, of that promiscuous thought in our mind tonight. We can throw that shield up and see we can quench all the fiery darts of the devil. So see, there's something to put on this armor of God. So now we done got up early in the morning. We done, lowered, we done girded our loins with truth. We done put on the breastplate of righteousness. We done shot our feet with the gospel of peace. And now we done took up the shield of faith. Now the devil's having a hard time. He ain't gonna be able to get you if you do all this stuff, folks. Listen to this next verse, verse 17. And then it says, take the helmet of salvation. I like this one more than anything, folks. The helmet of salvation. Getting saved. What does that do when you put a helmet on? It protects your head. And see, the helmet of salvation, what it does, it protects your mind. And your mind is where the battlefield is tonight, folks. You either win it or you lose it in your mind tonight. And when you put that helmet of salvation on your head, see, it covers your mind with the blood of Christ. It covers your mind with the things of God. It covers your mind with the word of God. And now, see, that helmet of salvation is protecting your mind from the enemy getting inside of your mind and causing you confusion in your mind when we put that helmet of salvation on. And then it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I know a lot of places we work, or we go to school, we can't carry a Bible with us. We can't tuck this Bible everywhere we go. But listen to, what, listen to what I'm telling you right now, folks. If you'll get up and prepare yourself every day, if you'll get up and spend time with God every day, if you'll make God a number one priority in your life, He'll write this word on your heart. And you'll carry this spirit, this sword of the spirit everywhere you go. And when that enemy comes after you, now not only have you girded your loins with truth, not only have you got on the breastplate of righteousness, not only have you shod your feet with a preparation of peace, not only, uh, not only have you taken up the helmet of salvation, not only do you have a shield of faith, but now you've got a sword. And every time that devil tells you something, you bring out that word and you cut it right into it. It says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says, For the word of God is sharp 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts going in and it cuts going out. Listen to me, folks. When you get to when you get the sword of the spirit up and it's in your heart, every time the devil comes against you, you already got all this armor on. You already got all this stuff all around you tonight. See, he can't penetrate you. He can't get to you. And if you got that word in your heart, as soon as that, as soon as he shoots a word towards you, you take that thing and you just slice it right in two. You take whatever the enemy's coming at you, you slice it right in two. See the enemy you can't touch you tonight. And then verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, this is Bible 101. 101. I want y'all to listen to what I'm getting ready to teach y'all right here. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, it's good when we wake up in the morning, and I do this every morning. God, thank you for waking me up. I do this before I get out of bed. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for a warm bed to sleep in. Thank you for food and all on the table. Thank you for clothes on my back. Thank you for shoes on my feet. And that prayer is fantastic. But God wants us to go deeper than that, folks. Listen to me tonight. It says pray with all supplication in the spirit. God is wanting us to pray through. God is wanting us to pray to Him and spend time with Him until we enter into His presence, until we enter into that spiritual realm where the healings are and the signs and wonders are and the miracles are. See, you can enter into that place where God lives. You can enter into that place where God resides. And once you learn how to enter into that thing, folks, that's why most people most people have never even entered into this place. But once you learn how to enter into that place and once you... Once you get touched by God real deep early in the morning and He knocks you down early in the morning, see, you're going to want that every day. That's what you're going to want in your life every day. And you're going to start making a practice every day to get up early and, 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 and to enter into His presence and to enter into His spiritual realm where He operates, folks. And that's when you're going to receive power in your life. And then the last first part of that verse right there, it says, And watching thereunto with all perseverance, and supplication for the saints. I, I got a lot more, but I, I'm, I'm going to close right there. Listen to me tonight, folks. Listen to me. And watch it there too with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. When one of us falls in a ditch, don't get on the phone and start gossiping about it. Don't go up here to, uh, uh, well, I use the restaurant all the time because it's just a gossip box up here. Don't go up here to the restaurant up here. And talk about your brother or sister that fell in Christ. Don't 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 go to, to work and tell all your buddies about your brother or sister that fell in Christ. It says right here, watch it there too with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We're brothers and sisters tonight, folks. We're family tonight. When one of us fall tonight, we ain't supposed to sit there and point at them and talk about them. No, we're supposed to get down in the ditch with them. And we're supposed to grab them by the hand. And we're supposed to lift our brother and sister up out of that ditch. And hallelujah, I come for the spirit on that. Well, we're supposed to get them up out of the ditch and help them up out of the ditch and not talk about them, but put your arms around them and love them and let them know that everything's going to be all right. Don't you know that's how the devil destroys people? Amen. That's, that's how the devil destroys people tonight is, is, is they fall in the ditch and nobody ever goes and gets them out. No, we want to get on our phone ministry and we want to start talking about them or we want to go to work and we want to start talking about them. But see, we should get down in the ditch with them and we should help them up out of the ditch and say, it's going to be all right. You know, you can make it. You know, yeah, you failed and it's okay. It's going to be all right. And you should pray with that brother or sister in Christ and bring them up out of that ditch and don't sit around and talk about them and don't sit around and put them down. You know why people sit around and put people down? It's because, see, they try to cover their own sin. They try to cover the faults in their own life. Listen, folks, we got to get down in the trenches with the people. We got to get down in the trenches with the brothers and sisters. It says, watch it there too with all supplications and perseverance to all the same. We're supposed to help each other. We're a family today, folks. We're not against each other. We're with each other. And we got a king tonight. And we got a father tonight. And his name is Jesus Christ tonight, folks. Listen to me tonight, folks. So there we go. We get up every day. And we prepare ourselves in the word of God. By doing what? How do we do that? We gird about our loins with truth. We put on a breastplate of righteousness. We shot our feet with a preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. We take the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Woo. 
thank you, Jesus, where we can quench all the fire darts of the devil, and then we put on the helmet of salvation, and then we take the sword of the Spirit, and then we pray in the Spirit. We enter into His presence. We enter into where the power is. We enter into where the glory seat is. We enter into where the blood is sprinkled. We enter into where we can have power over everything that's coming against us today, folks. And then when one of our brothers and sisters falls, we help them up. We don't talk about it. I don't want to ever hear anybody in this church talking about nobody. Amen. I want y'all to reach out there and you see your brother and sister fall. They make a mistake. So far, they make a mistake. The devil's job is to put guilt and condemnation on them. But if we'll pick them up and love them like they're supposed to be loved, guess what? He can't put the guilt and condemnation on him. Don't you know that the devil come to steal, to kill, and destroy? But Jesus came to give us life Amen. and give it to us more abundant. Listen, folks, receive that abundant life tonight. But it all starts out with us putting on the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mindset? To be a servant. To be a servant to other people. That's the mindset of Jesus Christ. And then he says, every day get up and put on the whole armor of God and prepare yourself. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this dark world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, my fight ain't with what I can see tonight, folks. My fight is in the unseen. But see, Jesus Christ resides in the unseen. And see, he can fight these battles for me when, when I take the time to prepare myself and I take the time to spend time with him and I take time to enter into that private place where he, he resides. And once I get in that place right there, see, he protects me. He puts that shield of faith around me. And see, he, he's got that blood surrounded all around me. And anything that the devil brings at me that day, yeah, it might knock me down a little bit. But if i got that helmet of salvation on, guess what? It can't, it can't really enter my mind. It may entertain my mind, but it can't enter my mind because i got the helmet of salvation on and it can't get inside there. So listen, folks, we can all change tonight. We all say we need this to change in our life. We need that to change in our life. I don't like this over here in our life. If you don't like what's going on in your life, I'm telling you right now, you can change it. Tonight, you can make that decision tonight to change what's going on in your life. How do we do that? By preparing ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ and taking on the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, Wilfred Gully. Praise God. Y'all understand that word tonight? Amen. 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 I'm going to preach this thing until this church is full. I ain't letting the devil discourage me. 